Assalamu alaikum this is Dr. Hasna with Hasna's not me and today we're discussing the mandibles. We're finally going to come to the lower jaw part of the skull. So before I get started do not forget to subscribe to my channel. Let's get started. Basically your mandible bone is going to have the body and the ramus. Now the horizontal part of the entire mandible bone you can see right here this is the body and the vertical part of the bone are the two ramuses or the rami. They're on either sides of the body. And from the rami, there are two projections that are coming out. One is anterior, this is known as the coronoid process. And one is posterior, this is known as the condyloid process. And in the condyloid process, the head of the mandible is found. That is right here, expanded from side to side. And just below it is the neck of the mandible. Let's talk about the mandible's bony features in sequence. So first I'm going to talk about the body of the mandible and its outer surface, all right? So overall the body of the mandible has an upper border, lower border, uh, an outer surface and a inner surface. The uh, upper border is known as the alveolar border because anything that has to do with teeth is known as alveolar. So this is going to bear the sockets for the teeth. And the lower border is known as the base of the mandible. Now, I just want you to remember that the base of the mandible largely is giving attachment to the uh, deep cervical fascia. And along with that, platysma is also here. All right. So now first, we're going to start with the outer surface of the body of the mandible. What are the important bony features here? Your, your right and left halves of the mandible meet in the midline in this area of the bone called the symphysis menti. All right. Anything that is in the uh, midline is the symphysis. And menta is anything mental, menta, wherever you hear this word is usually related to your chin area. Within the symphysis menti, you will see in the lower part, there is this protruding area. This is known as the mental protuberance. It's this triangular area you can see. The mental protuberance is basically forming that projection of your skin, uh, chin that you feel on your face, right? And infralateral angles of this uh, entire median projection, these two are the mental tubercles, all right? Now I want you to know about the teeth a little bit. Always remember that most front most teeth are known as the incisors and beneath these incisors lying right below them is the incisive fossa. Uh, remember this fossa because it's, we're going to talk about a couple of attachments for this fossa, right? Uh, then after the incisors, we have two canines and behind that come our premolars, all right? The premolars are basically uh, known as premolars because they come just before the molar teeth. So these are the two premolars to differentiate between molar and premolar is that the molars are usually wider and bigger so you can see these are bigger so these are the molars these are uh, they come right before the molars right so these are the premolar teeth and finally the molar teeth all right uh, then we have this uh, interesting uh, foramen or a hole over here you can see this is known as the mental foramen it is located at the interval between the two premolar teeth just below you'll see this the mental foramen and for the nerve and vessels of the same name are going to pass uh, out of it and then we go a little back behind the body you see this line it's running all the way ahead so this line is actually coming from the ramus from the anterior border of this ramus and it is going down you can see it's uh, quite prominent this is known as the oblique line of the mandible this gives attachment to a very important muscle we'll talk about in the next video now let's talk about the inner surface of the mandible so guys in the inner surface of the mandible in the midline first i want you to know just in the lower part there are going to be genial tubercles so these are like four in number there are two superiors and two inferiors these are located in the midline all right and in the base of the mandible, just below this area over here, you'll see the digastric fossa. All right. This is for another important muscle we're going to talk about. After that, what you'll see in the body, in the inner surface, is this another important uh, line. All right. And this is also running from, from behind the third molar tooth all the way ahead. So this line is known as the mylohyoid line. All right. And this separates the inner surface into an upper part and a lower part. The upper part is grooved. It is for the sublingual gland. It is therefore known as the sublingual fossa and below it is the submandibular fossa this is where your submandibular salivary gland is kept all right because it is sub sub meaning below and mandible meaning below the mandible and sublingual meaning below the tongue which is going to obviously lie right above here right so these are the two fossas so that was all you needed to know about the body let's talk about the ramus of the mandible in the ramus of the mandible there are up, uh, four borders like, uh, upper border lower border anterior border posterior border all right and then you have two surfaces. This is the medial surface. This is the lateral surface. 
and then we have two processes these are the two coronoid in front and condyloid behind now the condyloid i already told you this is the head of the mandible this is important in forming joint with the mandibular fossa of the temporal bone to form the temporomandibular joint all right uh, coming below is a constricted area known as the neck of the mandible this is constricted all right the neck of the mandible anteriorly has this depression area this is known as the pterygoid fovea all right the connecting part of the coronoid and condyloid process right here this is an arch shaped uh, area whenever there is an arch it's usually known as the notch so this is the mandibular notch so in the lateral area there is mostly ridges and uh, for the attachment of certain muscles i just want you to remember right about over here lie the facial vessels with the vein and the artery so usually you palpate in, on your face at this area right here where the ramus of the mandible becomes your body of the mandible is known as the angle of the mandible the posterior border of the ramus is becoming the inferior border of the body the angle of the mandible all right coming inside medial surface if you see that's more important you'll see a lot of uh, features here is that first thing you can see is this foramen right here it's known as a mandibular foramen leading to the mandibular canal inside which obviously you can't see it's like inside it and this eventually leads to the mental foramen all right and then just anterior to this man mandibular foramen you can see this uh, anti in the anterior part it's like a tongue like projection known as the lingula this also has importance and just in front of this mandibular foramen right here you can see going towards the mylohyoid line this is a groove known as the mylohyoid groove so the mylohyoid groove and mylohyoid line has this difference that mylohyoid line uh, line is present in the body whereas the mylohyoid groove will be present in the ramus of the mandible so guys that was all you needed to know about the bony features of the mandible in the next video i will be telling you about the attachments over these bony features until then thank you so much for watching